I think it's been established on this channel that The Inbetweeners is one of the most iconic British TV shows of all time. After an imperfect but satisfying end to the franchise with the second movie, The Inbetweeners remained largely untouched in the years following, with the main cast repeatedly quashing rumours of a return in the form of a third movie. However, in 2018 it was announced that a special one-off reunion show would be taking place, sparking both excitement and curiosity as to what this reunion would entail. It was reported by a number of outlets that the show would consist of the cast coming together to reminisce about the show. And I mean, hearing that, you would think this would be a pretty hard concept to somehow mess up. But they messed it up anyway. Oh, Fred. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Blake's my friend. <laughs> In early 2019, the reunion show titled Friends Reunited, don't know why Friends has a W in it, was broadcast on Channel 4, hosted by UK comedian Jimmy Carr, and it was an absolute pile of hot garbage. I lost count of how many times I simply just cringed in the most unbearable sense of the word, and this was owed mostly to the unbearable presenting of Jimmy Carr, who seemed to think that this was the Jimmy Carr show rather than the Inbetweeners reunion. A huge problem with Jimmy Carr's presenting throughout the show is how he appeared to treat the cast as if they were actually the characters that they portrayed in the show, making a number of outlandish comments that basically mocked and shit on the cast. What is the worst chat up line that you guys have ever delivered? Have you seen the in-between us? <laughs> <laughs> that is the only way you're getting laid. <laughs> uh, now, you get naked in the show, don't you? You get your cock yeah, out. Yeah, I didn't, though. I was too scared. It was the first film I'd ever made. And, and then you didn't want to get, get your penis out, out because no. it's malformed? No, just because it was, in, you know, no one wants to get their penis out. And it's worth reminding viewers at home that these four have no life. <laughs> and the contestants. <laughs> On an episode of his podcast made after the show aired, James Buckley talked about this exact issue, stating how he felt like he was being treated basically as if he was Jay from the show, and felt like he was basically just taking the piss out of by Jimmy Carr for the whole episode. It wasn't until I sat down and I was like, oh yeah, this is what Jimmy Carr does, isn't it? So it became a thing where it wasn't a celebration of that good thing that I did in my life, it was me being taken the piss out of for... Mm hours in the end and I didn't have the personality or the intelligence to cope with it as soon as we turned up he was like right put these name badges on and I was like I thought it was a joke I was like oh no no I don't want to wear that mm. and they were like no you have to put it on I was like oh okay and I was like oh so we're we're all just what what's going on here do you want to talk to me or do you want to talk to Jay from the Inbetweeners mm. and like there would be a couple of times where I'd say something and Jimmy would go, <laughs> still bullshitting. I want to make it clear that I don't hate or even dislike Jimmy Carr as a comedian, but I think his specific type of comedy was not at all right for a show like this. Because a lot of Jimmy Carr's jokes are based around taking the piss and being offensive, I think he benefits from being surrounded by other comedians who do the same. On 8 out of 10 Cats Does Countdown, Jimmy Carr excels as a host, and that's because he's surrounded by other comedians with a similar type of humour and who have the ability to give it back to Jimmy when he makes a comedy to them. How would you make this show kind of more, more kind of cool? <laughs> Different host. <laughs> I do, you look like a clown that's gone bad. <laughs> I thought I'd just go a bit casual, you know, because I know you always go very neat, like you've been carved out of balsa wood. <laughs> the weird thing about you, Jim, is you always look like an accountant, which is <laughs> so ironic. <laughs> Here, however, the lads are not comedians, they're actors who simply came back to talk about their memories from the show. I don't think they turned up to be roasted by Jimmy Carr for 90 minutes. A huge question I have is why on earth Greg Davis wasn't chosen as the presenter? He literally got more laughs out of me just by his comments from the audience than Jimmy Carr did presenting the whole show, which says a lot. Hi Jimmy, lovely to have you here. Lovely to be here. No, you can't. <laughs> As the show progresses, it becomes evident that it's just not going to get any better. We have a random reward ceremony thing. Didn't know we signed up to watch the BAFTAs, but there we are. Thank you very much. Um, please, 
Cheers. Well, uh, what an honour. We also have a quiz segment with four very normal in between us super fans. Okay, what is the full number plate on Simon's car? Birthday girl friends. Oh, go on. M three three five A L P. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> It's during this quiz that you can really tell how badly the main four just don't want to be there. I mean, watching James Buckley's facial expressions is genuinely more entertaining than watching the actual quiz because you can just tell how much he is hating it. I think it's only fair to acknowledge what the reunion show got right as there were a few parts that were relatively enjoyable to watch. Early on in the show, there's a VT of the main four lads driving the classic yellow car whilst talking about all their memories from the time making the show and it sums up everything that the reunion show should have been. This is another point that James Buckley discusses on his podcast, talking about how the producers simply should have just got the four lads in one room and that he actually thought this was what the reunion show was going to be when he was asked to do it. My whole thing was, yeah, that'd be great. That'd be such a laugh. People will see the four of us together and we'll talk about the fun that we had making that show. Mm -hmm. And um, and that will be that. Because And also, I just thought, that's impossible to fuck up. Just put the four of us boys together on television and have us talk about the in-betweeners and people will love that. Yeah. And I was like, there's no way that anyone could fuck this up. The only other semi-bearable parts of the show were the parts where Neil Oliver would talk us through the history of the in-betweeners and, you know, how it all started. It was just quite interesting to learn about, you know, the origins of the show and how the ideas for certain scenes came about and so on. These parts were quite well done and they provided a much needed break from the absolute shambles that was the rest of the show. All in all, the reunion show was an absolute disaster and was rightfully slammed by both reviewers and casual viewers alike. I think another reunion show should definitely be made to almost right the wrongs of this one, where, as James Buckley said, the lads just simply are put in one room and talk about the show between themselves without any unfunny award ceremony or cringy quizzes. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to like and subscribe. I apologise heavily for how long I was gone, but hopefully I'll start getting back into semi-regular uploads from now on. Feel free to leave video ideas for future videos below and I may use some of them. That was one of the main reasons I was gone was just simply ran out of ideas after that UK vs USA in between a series. but. We're back now and we should be uh, making more videos in the future. Thanks for watching, have a great day and bye.